today we'll be covering marketing calendar and journey builder so marketing calendar let's get into the org has anyone used marketing calendar before over here no i haven't so that, that's the option calendar on top what is a calendar calendar is nothing but everybody uses over here outlook yes, yes. so you know outlook calendar correct so yes. this this activity is just like uh, if you draw parallel with microsoft outlook this is just like their outlook calendar the difference between this and that is it gives your outlook calendar gives you a view of how is the week for you in terms of all the meetings appointment etc activities task etc etc similar philosophy is applies to over here in calendar what is a calendar calendar shows you all the activities and tasks in salesforce it means basically all the emails that all the mobile content that has been pushed out is supposed to be pushed out or already has been pushed out all those things in one single place okay now the reason behind this is so in general when a email for email uh, marketing company they have multiple campaigns running at the same time okay so once they have those campaigns and different people remember i spoke to you about business units initially yes. business units is nothing but uh, the way different organizations get set it up set up in your uh, marketing cloud so if that is the case then uh, how do you do that so over here right now if right now it's not coming because if you remember i we have only one business unit otherwise there would be a list of it over here and on the left hand side you basically get an option to select business unit if you have that access to that business unit you'll get an option on the left hand side along with this as well so this is one place where you can see if you have access to those other business units what all campaigns and events are basically planned in the future or in the past has been done okay and the message type that are associated with this are of these types emails automated ones all the mobile related data the campaigns that are running events so these are all the activities if you see not technically but these are all the activities that are getting performed in the whole in this case month i just selected month over here so in the whole month these are the activities that are performed they will be performed sorry so this gives you a holistic view of what all is happening in the your business unit as well as the other business units in which you are working so that you can coordinate so now you don't want a situation where you are running a campaign and other business unit is also running a campaign something similar they are sending an email based related to something that you are doing okay so that is the primary reason for calendar wherein you see a dashboard of what is the status of all your campaigns email sends at one single place okay so now if you see you can obviously from uh, just like outlook calendar you can add campaigns and events from here i'll come to that as well but you can do those activities as here as well if you hover over here what are the emails that are supposed to go on this 9th of this month or rather have gone 9th of september let's say if you come over here these are all the emails that are supposed to go on which what is the date 20th or rather again i'm wrong which is the next future date 27th let's say over here so this is the campaign that i had created so this is supposed to run on 27th of this month these are the 51 is it a big number okay these are the other activities that if you come down click over here and come down it'll show you all the related data for that email at one single place from there on you can move into that specifically and then dig in the details oh close it sorry so from there on you can do that stuff as well so it's more from a campaign management perspective wherein uh, you want to see what all campaigns are running parallelly in the future in the past all those data at one single place so that is the whole idea behind calendars okay so i'm not sure email studio has more most of your uh, priority will be using that one too much but this is something that will be uh, helpful more from a planning perspective marketing campaigns planning perspective okay so there is one thing that i wanted to share with you apart from that just for your knowledge th these are not all the things that are getting populated there are certain things which don't get populated in the calendar so i'll just pass you on that link so if you want if you're interested just go through that that's that's a simple thing just like saying choose data extension or uh, list there's a difference so that i'll share with you uh, not of too much uh, importance for you considering from where you are coming and what i have known historically from week 1 not too much of importance but yeah this is calendar and since i was supposed to cover i just wanted to cover it so that you are aware where all these uh, left hand side campaigns and emails sit so that you can view if you want to have one single place where you can view that so that is the place to do that okay i'll just make a note to pass on that help link to you okay so campaign 
so just do one thing for me once you are done with uh, today's training just try and have a look for your real life campaign from your client if you are working on a active client or do you guys work on at the same time active client orgs or you are on training for the whole time or do you get to see that client active client orgs uh, we do uh, manage on live clients mm -hmm. okay so just try and have a look at their calendar just go over there on calendar and just have a look at their calendar what is their plan so you will get a glimpse of what all they are planning to do in the future okay so the reason i gave you a corresponding example of microsoft outlook wherein you get to see what your calendar is for the whole week or day or month whatever the case may be so one place kind of dashboard you see what is all planned and it comes again stressing on that point it comes in handy specifically if you are using multiple business unit which is the real life scenario is wherein uh, you do want to see what other business units are doing just to make sure you don't duplicate the process or effort or save yourself some major embarrassment by not targeting the same kind of people the same thing so that is the primary usage of calendars mm -hmm. there are two small things if you click on this add campaign campaign as you are aware it comes over here on campaigns and add an event event is nothing but like what event do you want to do and do you want to associate a campaign with that so these are a couple of pre created campaigns and just do that you can select multi day campaign as sorry events as well if you click on over here campaigns let me see how all how many campaigns are created i think i created one yes so if you create a campaign basically campaign is an overarching uh, cover of the activities that you are doing so for example let me just create one rather than yeah so description whatever description you want to put obviously colors just to make sure it's visually different deployment when you are trying to planning to deploy it so let's say for example this campaign is about email campaign okay so you want to let's take a use case of the broadband new broadband product introduced by that telecom giant in our case a use case so for them the campaign would be the three months as i said three months the date is so that campaign deployment date would be let's say after three months like that the time who owns the uh, campaign code if you want to add or tags for segregation and once you create that you get all this data see now once this campaign is created you can add different things to the campaign what all you can do as a part of campaign campaign is an overarching placeholder now what all you can do in our case let's say in the use case that you were using broadband product to be launched you wanted to have an email campaign email select that email whatever email that you are planning to do let me select mine i think this was okay i think this was the correct one so this is one of the emails that has been attached to this particular campaigns okay so this is the primary usage of calendars inside calendars you can create campaigns or you can view campaigns how it is running campaigns is something i'm presuming you might be using it no calendars campaigns um yes uh, we work on the campaigns part but calendar is fairly new because most of our clients do not have business units in them mm -hmm. that would be strange actually i don't know for some reason i thought business unit would be a common occurrence but it seems it's not but yeah campaigns so campaigns you have created give me a good example of a campaign so i just chose from our my uh, my previous use case a week to case study what what is the, one of the interesting campaigns that you have worked on campaign mean could be anything but uh, anything anything you would like to share your example real life example uh, i don't uh, i don't think we have any unique real life examples like what uh, we work on the normal ad hoc campaigns like the nfl week is going on in us right so mm -hmm. we just created a campaign for that we had a journey for labor day and okay so yes uh, we and we also Sorry, um, i was there on labor day us i didn't get your email uh, but you will <laughs> no you will not be subscribed in my client list right yeah yeah and so so basically campaigns like for example one of the campaigns is labor day campaign in yep. which you probably send emails it could be sms yep. okay mm -hmm. so that that's that's what i wanted to cover about calendars and campaigns associate them with camp ca associate campaigns with a calendar or dates so that you can give a full picture view okay so now we come on to the big one journey builder what is journey builder anyone basically it's a path or it's a journey uh, which you set for your customer or for your uh, for a subscriber the how 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 he or she get the email from a beginning uh, it's a basically a journey how you uh, set up for them that depends it varies, it varies upon the clients and uh, the subscribers absolutely just make sure that whenever you talk just only say subscribers yeah. not customer subscriber is a more standard way of talking in marketing cloud lingo subscriber so it's like understood so customer customer can be anything it's very generic word 
so even if i am guilty of doing that point me out because i also try and stress that we talk in only terms of contact subscriber and all those this digital marketing lingo so that is understandable by the client when you are talking to that and then also uh, gives enough weight to you whenever you are conversing with anyone that if you talk in that lingo people know that you know the stuff that you are talking about so try and use that subscriber and uh, as i said contact or journey etc etc so correctly said uh, what journey builder is is a canvas it's a canvas where you draw your subscribers contact point with you okay as simple as that there could be many definitions out there to a canvas to create one to one personalized journey for your subscriber it could be another way so basically a uh, journey builder is used in instances where you want to have one to one what do you say personalization with your particular subscriber because it can change based on what you do it can change based on the fact that you open an email it can change based on the fact that you don't open an email it can base change on the fact that uh, where you click and all those things so it's very highly personalized and you can do it in bulk so you can use a data extension for let's say uh, 100000 people and it will run so it does that bulk take that bulk uh, subscriber and injects it in your journey and everybody gets a taste of personalized touch because based on the fact what you have done it gives you a new type of experience so if you have for example if you haven't opened an email it gives you another email which is which you have defined earlier if you have opened an email it gives you another email type of email so everybody has a different personalized journey so that is the whole idea behind journey builder one to one personalized service to your subscriber okay there is a lot of discussions between the fact that what in what cases shall we choose automation studio or what we can use this one journey builder but journey builder is generally used if there are lot of uh, subscriber you want to do personalization with marketing cloud of course you can do that but primarily this tool is directed towards heavy lifting huge data you want to for example you want to send a birthday email to let's say 100 million oh, sorry 100000 subscribers use automation studio instead of uh, this one uh, journey builder because automation studio is made for heavy lifting slicing and dicing of data getting extracting the data from one place to other and then doing some action onto it one of the action is email but this is more of customer oh, sorry subscriber centric data or uh, activities so that is what journey builder is so try and have some differences okay don't use uh, either one of them interchangeably see what the use case is and then try and use that okay yep again on the left hand side these are all the folder structures as a best practice please create your folder structure and then create your journeys inside that always recommend a client do that create a uh, folder structure proper folder structure in amongst your team and then you basically start uh, storing your journeys in that let me create two examples over here journey for template journey from scratch let's start journey from scratch and then i'll talk about journey from template okay very important best practice always put the nomenclature correctly journey builder automatically takes a nomenclature over here if you see okay new journey september date time do that otherwise it automatically defaults to it but it's a best practice use that as a nomenclature saying what you are trying to achieve so let's say drip campaign can journey okay now I'll leave it click somewhere outside so it saves i'll just quickly save it so i just wanted to show you it will appear on all journeys so i need to actually move it these are all very uh, uh, other things that you can do but i mean just trying to uh, do it in front of you uh, these are all standard things for a folder structure to move and copy and paste and all those things i'm presuming this this thing should be okay with you guys yeah search journeys tag them for categorization filter them if you want to use in terms of draft running finish stop either ways tags are a good practice to create if you have so many journeys and you want to create so for example labor day journey for example labor day journey so you have multiple journeys for labor day you can use that as a tag to categorize what kind of uh, journeys you are looking at so those kind of facilities would be there then this is goal we'll talk about it later so goal is nothing but what you want to achieve and then of course you can search the journey from here so let me did it move actually it didn't no it should move actually yeah it says it moved yes okay so left hand side okay we'll cover what all each one of them is i'll describe each one of them for you and then we'll do one or two examples try and do one or two examples and i'll see i'll create a mock up journey for you 
you, what you need to do as of today's assignment is to make sure that those journeys run and show you the intended results i've already created one for you we'll create one right away in front of you and try and configure as much as possible if the time permits we'll try and run it okay if not then uh, just use that example to run the journey from your side create it in your own org or folder structure whatever it is and try and run that journey see the results from that journey data extensions what is the data extension over here simply click and drag over here it gets added so this is your canvas remember i told you it's a canvas to draw a subscriber touch points with your client so this is a canvas you can draw a lot of things on this canvas hence the name canvas so now you, now you what is the use of each one of them data extensions if you want to inject let's say those hundred thousand subscribers i spoke about into the journey you use if you have created a data extension for that select this data extension over here configure it how do you configure it click over here select that data extension very simple go to that particular data extension see over here next part is do you want to filter based on that so you don't want all hundred thousand of them data this data extension to enter you want some criteria as well added so let's see that if you click on edit so just to give you a glimpse it says contact data so when i say contact data what happens is this is coming from contact builder okay so i'll just give you a quick example just give me a moment yeah sorry so yeah i'll just give you a quick glimpse of contact builder because i need to give you a bit of background but don't get confused too much remember we told about contact sitting on top subscribers is there then uh, sms subscribers are there mobile subscribers so i'll just trying to show you from where this is contact data is coming audience builder contact builder come on open up okay in the meantime so basically what with the help of contact builder what you can do is you can create relationships so your data structure you're setting up a data structure so how many of you have done the data structure setup in contact builder on marketing cloud or it's already preset for you once you come in or there is no data set relationship existing for you uh, normally it is taken care of the clients end because they are the best judge of how they want their relationships to work like how they want to okay. relate field to another field and we just uh, uh, work based on the data which they have given okay so again another another piece of advice go and have a look at their contact builder module okay for your clients one see how it is configured what i want you to do is go and have a look at this component which i wanted to show you it's taking some time to load so basically okay, you are I, aware yeah i tried uh, looking into the contact builder once but uh, the uh, but it had a you know huge load of data and i just got confused so i just closed it okay not to worry this is this is the bespoke model that comes to the first screen data designer basically what you do in this data designer is it design the relationships so in sql or in any uh, real life enterprise structure data structure you have linkages between different tables okay that linkages between different tables is actually been set up over here so if you see have i created yes so i've created a relationship inside this so what relationship does is if you remember first time we had during discussing of data extensions we had a couple of examples where you uh, have uh, one data extension with customer id which holds his first name last name email for example another data extension or a table with only his preferences so for example he likes to buy this product or he has bought this product so his behavioral data his other attributes so you can link both of them so over here if you see this is a customer which customer id and his detail and this is the product details so i've linked both of them so with the help of this linkage what i can do is i can traverse through this it can go multiple folds so i can travel traverse through and get the data from that so for this customer what is the product name that you have purchased so i can get this data with the help of this customer id because customer id is mapped over here to product id in this case so this is the basic use of this data extension so now coming back to our topic this is the contact data that we are talking about not the subscriber data contact data these are all set up in the system as well so it's a system default setup if you see over here uh, come back yes this model this is what you see over here this one same thing okay not for our concern but just to let you know so you should be aware of what is there around probably not might not know in detail but you should be aware because you never know it might help so this is what i have created test customer data so if you see these are the 
fields from that table that I can select and I can put a filter on it now. I can go inside test product data as well. See, I can, because these were related, I can get into that. So this is the kind of leverage it gives you if you define that data model in the beginning. Got the concept or got confused? I had no intention of talking about it, but it came, so I thought you should be aware of what it is, yeah? Yep, uh, we got the concept. Okay, so now let's say, for example, uh, you want we were talking about insertion of data extension filter contacts what do you want to do let's say you want to put a filter criteria what happens yes or double click okay so these are all the operations so for example that you can do with a filter is null is not null is after is before so for example you want to send this sub email or this sorry filter the contact in which date, date of birth for them is let's say before date this one just give an example random one okay and then done got the concept of it and then to make it more complex now you can do ending and ordering as well between these filter conditions so let's say we chose this condition email so email for example is equal to test at the rate gmail.com okay done now you can do ending you double click it becomes or so you can do that camp uh, complex permutation and combination of filters so if date of birth is between before this if email id is this if the name contains the word this then do that like that then allow that contact to enter into the journey so that is the idea behind filter contacts contacts means the main contact not the subscriber contacts okay so this is the condition that was created date of birth is before this one emails equals this one oring it's a oring thing everybody is aware of oring and ending yes yes yeah okay okay so this was about data extensions see this is what we have configured we can schedule it as well we can schedule it to run once recurring or automation so this we'll talk about later but run once let's say run once we'll select this option what it says journey runs on activation so on activation at a specific day and time both the options are there so you want to run this journey what time right now as soon as it is activated from this button over here or you want to run it at a specific time so for example on uh, labor day in the morning at least not in the morning but yeah uh, early morning 7 8 something like that so you can schedule it over here okay so yep. you click on summary for example done okay so this is the first part of data extension which has been configured i'll delete it for now so that i can show the other ones okay api change event this is something more technical we won't talk about it api because something if there is an api change or api trigger then only it works so if that is something integration between uh, various systems with marketing cloud in that case this should be utilized so not of our scope cloud pages and salesforce data salesforce since you don't get integrated with salesforce this is utilized for if you have salesforce connected salesforce crm not salesforce marketing cloud if you have connected salesforce crm with this then any changes on salesforce side will trigger something on this journey so that is the use case for salesforce data let's talk about cloud pages has anybody created a cloud page anything of that sort on cloud pages this is a cloud page option over here yes web studio cloud pages has anybody done that cloud pages yes couple of okay. has done it okay great so we'll see how what it is what all configuration goes into this even i haven't used it for some time now because generally we use uh, data extensions to be honest okay anyone aware what is smart capture form i think it's basically an opt-in form no so you can use it as an opt-in form so basically it's a form okay you can do whatever you want with that form so basically and the best part is the data directly gets, gets stored in the selected data extension. So it's basically out of the box way of creating a form. The form could be a landing page, the form could be just collecting your data, survey, whatever is there. But the data automatically gets stored into that data extension. So for example, you're collecting first name, last name, gender and date of birth, for example, from a subscriber. It gets directly captured into a particular data extension that you pointed to. So that is a smart capture form. Basically it captures the data and sends it to the data extension. That is a smart capture form, nothing else. It's a form. Right now there's none created over here. So if I would have selected, let's see. Uh, yeah, let me just quickly F5. 
possible i can show you so what i'm doing basically i'm creating a landing page right now on which i'll use a smart capture form just creating a basic structure we'll we'll cover that in detail once we come to our uh, cloud pages so right now i'm not as i said i'm not going to the details but we'll talk about it in detail later on but i'm just showing you for your demo purposes Pankaj, uh, the smart capture form only works on the custom blocks or in the inbuilt blocks or will custom html work over here as well uh good question so there was one of the use cases where uh, we actually uh, utilized this smart capture form and we did a bunch of coding to make the form uh, look good but it was actually failing so the recommended practice in this case is try and get the code create a smart capture form over here in this page and then get the code or whatever template you have and configure it over here in the system okay so what i was saying was one of the use case use cases that i uh, had seen in the past was uh, if you use a smart capture form and you uh, do you do that coding outside and get it, everything in copy paste the chances are it might not work 100% of the time okay so the best practice would be in this case is use create this smart capture form over here in this content block and then add your whatever scripting or html code basically you do html code so all those beautifying html code you add it onto that okay so you do it over here in this rather than doing it outside and copy pasting it okay so see a simple i've selected a data extension three things come i'll just save it i just hope it reflects on uh, the journey builder because sometimes it doesn't at least instant instantaneously So what has happened is I've just created that form. I've hosted it on this public URL as well. So if you click this public URL from anywhere in the world, you'll get to see this page output it. So it will take a couple of minutes to reflect. So that's a smart capture form. I need to put the form. Come on. Okay, let's see if it is reflecting in Journey Builder now. I hope it does because sometimes it take a couple of minutes to actually reflect yeah great so see this is even in this event entry source this was the one that i created over there this was the name so it's getting reflected over here so this is another form of event entry so we call it entry sources so it is called of event type entry event event entry sources of event type that is what how we call it uh, this is entry event source of data extension type so this is for cloud pages so these are this is another second one that we spoke about entry event okay got it we'll move on yep uh, pankaj uh, one thing uh, can we use two entry source in this no simultaneously no only one yep okay uh, what else was left we'll come to that api thing now api event okay okay I'm just checking just in case same process follows over here as well so i'm not filtering anything right now okay so now if you want to make any contact enter remember the contact it's not subscriber anymore any contact enter the data use this api event key which is generated over here for this particular uh, option in order to trigger this journey so that happens technically in the background so what happens is basically if you are for example you are calling this system marketing cloud from externally from external system you need to call this event definition key use this event definition key to call this what do you say journey event entry source of type api so that is what is the use case so for example if you want to uh, let's say uh, trigger a journey from a sql system which is holding some kind of data for example so you push that data into ftp ftp comes into this data extension then what do you do you want to trigger that uh, journey from external from the system you can use this key to do that trigger that so that is the typical use case of this type event entry of api type has anybody uh, by any chance done that thought of it because this is something which is more of a development perspective 
uh, scenario but when you are when you are integrating two different system one is being marketing cloud other is other one whatever the case may be so anybody you worked on this kind of scenario no uh, we have not uh, explicitly worked on the api trigger scenario okay chances are to be honest you won't be but yeah you should be aware so that's okay what else is left okay event okay so you want to run this based on certain events so for example one of the events is uh, you want to hear some you want to trigger based on some contact date like for example a good case is your uh, birthday anniversary all these kind of things so it keeps on hearing and whenever there is a birthday for example it's today it sends the email triggers that so that is what the event is so let's do that scheduler it is getting retired so let's not talk about it even okay this is getting retired so i'm not too much into this now okay there is our data over here so see so this is the configuration so date it shows date of birth so contact entry date on date of birth you want to do it on date of birth it could be before like this so you can choose it to be on date of birth just before date of birth let's say in in some cases you want to do it afterwards all these kind of settings along with time and uh, your uh, cst time so remember one thing everything is cst over here until you can make a change specifically so everything is cst so anybody works in cst time zone est yep uh, we all are working CST. in est cst pst everything everyone yeah. okay i actually i hate uh, pst to be honest est is best because it your day starts early so i find it better est okay we we'll go to next if you want to again put a filter again based on that criteria if you want to filter put the filter again like we discussed again something like date of birth is less than equal to or equal to whatever probably a bad example because we were doing date of birth so let's say product id product id equals something absolute done let's put a value okay so this is the summary of what all you have been done so this is the data extension date of birth attribute okay one more thing i should actually talk about yeah reentry so this is another important thing okay so if you are using it for date of birth of course you want entry on a yearly basis you don't want to send birthday emailers every year but if the use case being different you can select monthly or only run once so depending on the use case you can do that okay that is want yep. to come back to this because i missed talking about but i saw it in the summary so date of birth and these are the time and everything the on which it will run so done so this is the configuration for entry event type so basically you are hearing or listening to the particular event it might happen today tomorrow whatever like date of birth anniversary office uh, first first year anniversary completion in the office like that okay typical use cases now let me just choose for the demo purposes i'll use a simple data extension and then move forward to the next activities by the way what i didn't ask was how about week one's assignments so week two we spoke about in terms of use case how about the week two uh, sorry week one assignments because week two was kind of uh, something overarching to whatever you have done in week one so everybody was able to do all the activities that i spoke about on week one like a and b uh, email templates email studio all those things we spoke about yes yes i'll take your word as yes you're right accept it thank you okay so this is a event uh, data extension of event entry source take it now activities okay so what all activities can be done will be right now we'll be talking about emails but we'll be coming to sms's and in push notifications because there is a section for uh, mobile studio where is discussing mobile studio uh, next week so once we talk about it we need to we will quickly check back on that of all these configurations because you might not get it today but since we have completed email studio we'll we'll talk about primarily email stuff by the way uh, talking about email studio do you guys work on email studio sorry uh, social what am i saying mobile studio uh, no uh, we have not worked on mobile studio okay to be honest the use cases are less people these days use more of email studio uh, i mean in general of course mobile studio is there i'm just making a note of it so that i don't forget 
so email as a best practice whenever you select an email put a wait time this is a wait time symbol so it will wait for one day okay always put couple of days gap never do anything uh, just after email do something no always as a best practice put two days three days as a wait time okay the reason being any guesses um uh, uh, the journey builder can have enough time to collect the metrics correct so uh, simple example so you want to uh, uh, so let's let's say you say next step is uh, you want to say engagement whether he has opened it or not so till when it should look it sh it won't uh, start looking from just as soon as the email has been sent it takes some time for people to actually view it some people see it on the next day so you should have some time given as a wait activity after every email as a best practice use that never forget so select message so this is about email message configuration which we have covered so i'll try and go a bit quicker come on you can create a message from here itself i think earlier in some time back it was not available so they have just recently introduced this create a message from here itself which is nothing but same thing okay internal practice i'll use that one the one that you have created is more bankable okay so this is the email what else message configuration these are the other configurations remember that we spoke about sender profile what will be the sender profile from which it seems who has sent the email do you want it this one this one that can be so all these are admin parts but just reminding you what kind of profiles it should be there profile is automatically created by the system once is default they have used over here so these are all configurations that is already for you preset by the admin or the client subject pre header of course nothing to talk about delivery options so this is all publication list separation list all this kind of things that are there you can configure some advanced options message priority of course uh, add a keyword if it's commercial email you shouldn't actually make it priority as high if it is a commercial email but anyways let's say you do that so we met this is a message message uh, bit email i selected configuration delivery options and some of the advanced options if you are available if they are available to you so this is what i have configured for that email okay done uh, pankaj uh, can you just uh, give an overview of how the message priority will work okay so message priority is something uh, if you remember we touched base upon uh, a, while setting it as commercial and transactional remember and there was an option to set it as uh, if, if it is a commercial type of email okay you can actually uh, set it as uh, low medium or high but then as a practice you should commercial should be a bit low because you don't want commercial emails to be on high priority and send instantaneously but if it is a transactional email transactional emails needs to be sent as soon as the customer does does a operation so for example user uh, password update if you have done a password update a email should be sent to him instantaneously so that defines the priority that's how the priority should be used in so in this case if the email is of type commercial you should actually not put it as high as a practice nobody technically is stopping you but do don't do not do that okay so that is what okay. the priority is and the reason it's used for okay i'm not sure why this icon is not coming see there is supposed to be some icon over here the, the email kind of icon for some reason i don't know they have changed something oh, strange i don't see that yep so that is the smart capture form remember it has published to the web now so if anybody clicks on this link he'll see this page you guys as well so i enter these details and submit that is a smart capture functionality it goes into a data extension directly into my data extensions so basically i'm collecting a data from the customer it could be opt in as well if you want okay coming back to our bread and butter journey builder so okay we had already configured that okay over here so before creating a journey you should, all the content should be already ready with you whether it's a email in mobile studio mobile sms and everything all the content should be already pre created and ready for you so the, the journey is place where you actually attach everything together and make it as a big picture for your subscriber okay so emails and everything before starting make sure it's ready for you to use so email you can name it of course let's say a general convention is for example first email like that or email 1a i'll tell you why it is 1a this is one of the conventions that we use so this is the first email that goes to the customer so for example if there is a uh, engagement split later on added it's so two emails path will be created so in that case we'll write 2b and sorry uh, 2a and 2b like that so that's the convention generally people follow while uh, creating those emails otherwise it will be very confusing if it is a huge journey imagine journeys can go very big very deep okay so that is a convention you should use in order to identify it 
okay let's say we'll put it for our testing purposes of course you have to put it minute two minute three minute so that you can see the results flowing in this direction but as a practice as i said not at least two to three days minimum it should be the wait time let's say it does that you can put absolute time as well as it there's an option over here if you see you can put absolute time okay till this date wait not the three days and remember three days till that from the time email has been sent okay that is that the time begins Just remember that there could be a lot of between lot of uh, activities between these two right now not the case but there could be a lot of activities between here email and this data extension so the time starts from this one as soon as the email sent and then it waits for three days and then does whatever activity you configure after that just remember that it's not absolute that whenever the contact enters starts from that three days no it depends if there are a lot of activities then it starts after this just remember that okay email so email was simple what else emails we have done rest all we said we'll cover while uh, email studio oh, sorry mobile studio as well as line and everything else different even i haven't used line line everybody knows oh no line is a messenger line is a whatsapp like messenger okay i have i'm also writing down to send you best practices document for journey builder because you are using it day in and out so i'll make a point so that i can share that document so one of the things that i spoke about for example only use sorry wait use wait times and uh, after every email send attach a wait time for at least two to three days so one of the best practice naming conventions folder structures all those things okay so that is one of the best practices so i thought i'll share it with you so yes. this is about this i've noted the points i'll share it across with you so that you can detail it but if you do a simple google search you'll do that okay these are the other activities which all have you used which all um uh, we have used the wait by duration wait until date the random split the decision split okay like so uh, some of us have used but uh, everyone does not have the idea of how this would work okay so the common ones that are used is decision split engagement split so this one let's do that right away okay decision split what is a decision split decision split is based on certain factor business rule your journey will change for that particular customer sorry not customer subscriber even i am guilty of saying that a particular contact or subscriber okay so and what could be the decision split decision split could be the business rules so for example if the contacts one of the business rules could be if the contact was born before this date choose this path if beyond this date choose this path i'm just giving you a option see path 1 reminder you can add path 2 could be path 3 so let's go and edit one first one okay now see the difference over here this one is contact data other is journey data any idea what is journey data what is the difference between the two okay so concept this is conceptual so just try and understand that mostly you will be using to be honest i don't know you might be using the other one as well but contact data what is contact data contact data remains absolute contact data is the the one that you used in the beginning it doesn't changes during the course of journey okay but journey data is a subset of that data which changes during the journey so for example if you have if you have let's say uh, what what can be a good example of journey data uh, any any engagement that has happened due to which something has changed so for example you clicked on some email and it, the data for example was supposed to be uh, stored in a data extension for example so basically the value of that attribute has changed during the journey but contact data that attribute will be what it was there in the beginning so basically contact contact data never changes during the course of journey journey data does so that is the difference between the two okay i am presuming if you have used used decision split you might be using contact data any any okay journey data can also be used but i mean if you are sticking to contact data stick to that it could be confusing but that is the difference for your uh, information purpose journey data and contact data so uh, you will also giving uh, you will also be giving a use case of a journey data example as well right yes so i'm just noting it down journey data use case that you are aware why it is used yeah yep noted down okay let's go for contact data which we know where is our okay this is our attribute group same thing so this is this is nothing as what we were doing in filters technically okay i'm just doing something random over here by the way but this is technically the same thing filters that we were doing ending oring whatever you want to do so what it says is if date of birth is equal, let's say i'll use a better one uh less than 
that is less than as before if date is before 9th this of this uh, so non september 2nd of september 9th nahi hai it's english it's us yeah i get a lot of confusion in that okay if yeah, date yeah. that if date of birth is before september 2nd go to path one same thing if a date of september is greater than that let's say the date of birth is equal to let's say let's say equal to then go to this path if where is date of birth yes so if date of birth is after date let's say second done summary oh we forgot to update the reminder one so let's delete this and use that in oops why didn't get deleted delete yes i'll use that in reminder okay so if date of birth is before 2nd september go to path 1 if date of birth is equal to 2nd september if rest of the cases remainder will take care of it no need to configure just like amb testing that was there rename it properly path 1 part 2 remainder okay just make sure you rename it from here properly so like for example dob before cpt second for example like that always do it properly oops okay so these are the three splits after proper nomenclature use all in the journeys always use correct nomenclature because if the journey becomes huge it will be very difficult for anybody to actually test it validate it or recheck it if there is an issue in the journey if the nomenclature and everything is not very clear okay so this is decision split agreed any confusion in that i'll take the okay. silence as all good yes okay okay random split summary by the way just talking about sales force uh, i know you are a digital marketing agency which actually is more into multiple esps sales force marketing cloud being one of them i would also recommend try and get certified in sales force marketing cloud okay it's it's actually a valuable asset if that has been pitched to your customers so if you speak to a customer prospective customer or existing customer and you tell that your team is for example certified in marketing cloud this is applicable to any esp to be honest adobe or any mailchimp for example hubspot that you're working on so try and as a recommendation try and actually get certified because it increases your uh, value and when the value gets combined let's say out of 10 of 10 three people are certified it becomes very easy for your company to pitch that to your customer so that we have while selling uh, the prospect your prospective customer if they tell you that uh, we have team of 10 people imagine if the statement i have team of 10 people who are expert in let's say sales force marketing cloud versus saying that we have a team of experts of 10 people out of which five people are certified imagine the way the weight each of the dialogue carries okay there's no there's no need to do a and b testing in this it's clearly simple so try and actually look forward to do some kind of certification in marketing cloud i'm biased towards salesforce so i would recommend marketing cloud but for yourself for the company you can do what in which, whichever is actually company is providing more value with for example it could be mailchimp hubspot i don't know you are better judge so try and get certified but as a part of this i would recommend you to get certified check with uh, your team members or leads or managers if that is a option you should do that it will help you your company a lot because it carries a lot of weight these certifications in the market so try and do that okay so random split random split as the name suggests it will do some splitting based on its own mind whatever it feels like so as a contact which is activity there uh, is no select path or populate it randomly so there is no uh, let's say uh, i'm not getting that exact phrase no madness to uh, i'm not not getting that phrase but anyways it's random okay got the point was trying to put it beautifully but it's random so you can change that how many contacts goes in which path which other path let's say 90 10 okay you can add multiple paths as well if you want more than one yeah just like this can split is just is random in nature in decision split you have to configure it which path will be taken based on certain logic over here you leave it to the system any good, good use case for this any use case oh. good use case for random split so what's warming up we use for like if you want to send some uh, half of the clients first or what is some... that term used ip warming 
Yes, good one. So you you are aware of IP warming? You do guys do that? Yes, we do. Yes, that's great. So if you are doing IP warming, that means you are starting the system for them. So that means you are involved in the beginning of the system initiation implementation. So FYI, and uh, that's a good example. IP warming, correct. So for those of you who are not aware of IP warming, IP warming is a concept with the help of which you increase the reputation of your IP, the IP that dedicated IP that the client has bought for you. It is uh, utilized to send emails. Now the emails outside the world uh, servers, email servers don't recognize your IP because nothing has been sent out from that. So whenever the IP comes from your IP, they look at it with this eye of suspicion. That is it spam? Is it not spam? Like that. So this helps you building that reputation that the servers outside the world see emails coming from originating from the IP that you have built is credible. So that is IP warming. So basically, you warm the IP, you warm the machine in order. So you warm the motorbike or scooty in the morning. No, on cold days, that is what IP warming. So make sure it's warm. It's good enough to work on. So that is a good example for random. Speed. That you're not sure you just want to do that. So do you have any template or something to do random? Sorry, uh, IP bombing. Yeah, we have actually we, we have done in uh, previous in past. That's okay. Just just checking in case you require something. We have a template uh, wherein uh, you can do it. So I mean, I'm assuming you're doing it this way that uh, Gmail hotmail. Let's say you're sending 10% email to Gmail, 10, 10 20% to Hotmail, for example, Yahoo, like that. All different server providers in the US scenario. Okay. Assuming, correct? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, moving on. So this is about random split. What is the third one? Engagement split. What is engagement split? Engagement split is how engaged the customer is based on the previous email that you had sent to him or her. Did I say customer? No, subscriber. So. The reason being, I want to spend more time on journey builder and automation because this is your bread and butter. You'll be doing it in, in and out a lot. Oh dear, I didn't save it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, engagement. But prior to that, yes. I need to put an email. See this icon I was talking about. It was not coming last time. See, it was looking very odd to me. So I was like, why oh, it's not coming? Engagement split. Oops. I need to select a message to monitor. What is engagement split? In the meantime, I'm doing that configuration. Somebody can give me a brief. Somebody who hasn't spoken. Yeah. Engagement split is uh, basically how the subscriber is engaging with our email. Like if he has opened the email or not click. opened, click. clicked or not clicked. So basically, engagement. Engagement is how engaged, how uh, is he opening my email or not, and all those things. So based on engagement, if he opens, do something. If he doesn't open, do something else. If he clicks, do something else if it doesn't click do something else that kind of uh, journeys can be set with the help of engagement and it is used widely so these are a couple of the reason i'm started with these ones these are widely used across the industries very common use cases these guys have so i need not to speak about engagement splits use case i'll select a message so this was the message to monitor okay want to track based on open clicks <clears throat> these are the clicks that are there as a part of this it provides your list or bounces. Okay, there are two types of bounce: hard bounce, soft bounce. Any difference? Anyone? So hard bounce are the permanent bounce, basically, uh, which are wrong email ID, which are having long wrong email addresses, are uh, sort of things. And soft bounce are uh, some sometimes uh, subscribers have uh, their inbox filled, so they might not receive the email at that time. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Or could be soft bounce. Could be like the email server is full, or yep. it's, it's down for some time. It will again try and pull. Send that. So that is hard and soft bounce. So that is one of the categories. I think with digital marketing you would be aware of that. But thought I'll just check bounce. So as I said, this is the guidelines. Use 72 hours. That means three days of wait time. Okay, which I was talking about. So now bounce email with the name correctly. And we oh you, we chose bounce okay let me choose the other one because it's easier to actually demonstrate if somebody opens the email okay if they open the email go to this path if they don't open the email go to this path okay what would be the classic use case of this is just a simple one which is very common as well as I said welcome. classic welcome email yeah so basically you want correct you want to create multiple uh, you want to send multiple drip uh, sorry not multiple drip campaigns drip campaigns is something like drip drop by drop you send email step by step not at once so basically welcome email send but first customer the first email based on that did he open it or not if he has opened it for example yes 
then you send something which is better for example coupon code since you are our esteemed customer welcome to our family this is the coupon code you can use to our for our purchase it will give you five percent off something like that to entice that customer if he hasn't opened it you can send a separate e a different email saying that okay i'll add these emails as well so you can add those emails this email this email will say okay take this coupon code since you have opened it welcome to our family take this coupon code for our next purchase it will give you five percent off for example this one will might say that since you haven't opened it so they'll send you another email which i don't know with a proper subject line change subject line so that you notice it for example this is this is and you can do multiple levels of it if it if, if we after that is it doesn't open it again had that uh, this split activity engagement split again over here and then based on that second time if he opens it okay second time doesn't open again do some other activity so this is the use case of uh, engagement split understood and i'm pretty sure you would be doing it in your day to day activities correct yep yep yes so this i mean use case wise is pretty simple and used most of the times okay i also want to check about weight by duration weight by attributes weight by date okay let's do that quickly let me cover all three of them okay same thing isn't it did i was oh yeah okay so which is weight by duration okay same thing just like weight by duration number of days or you want to have a absolute time on which it should wait weight by attribute now this is a bit different attribute let's see contact data this is our attribute group okay see what it has done is it's saying that one day after date of birth wait in travel whatever date of birth is stored in that contact data so the date of birth is for example 2nd of september so it has to wait one day after that so it's not absolute number that wait till day, tomorrow or day after tomorrow it's saying based on the data in the it's so dynamic in nature basically understood and this could be one of the use case that uh, wait for his email birthday and send the email let's say 12 o'clock on that night or after that or before that so this could be one of the use cases for wait by attribute any other use case that you can think of you might have used it since you mentioned in the beginning you used it uh i okay i think i think uh <laughs> हमने कार्ट में एक चीज डाल के रखी है पर अबंडेंट कार्ड ओके सो कार्ड माइट बी द केस हाउ डू यू सेट दिस लॉजिक अबंडेंट कार्ड में सो यू सेइंग ऑनलाइन परचेस एंड आई केप्ट इट इन योर कार्ट सो then online store is sending an email to me that saying that you have this item into cart kindly complete your purchase hmm. and no, that uh, that is static that is that would be static no so if you have your so that information you will get that for example these customers are in the cart for example that you will get hmm. in your data extension you can simply insert them and create a, 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 a this cart journey kaun si cart abandoned cart journey hmm. that is a static one use case antenal yes. unless antenal unless you want to do some dynamic thing on it for example you get the data in that data extension these are the people who have actually been added in ab abandoned their cart today for example and you keep on checking after 5 days from this day if they are still in cart abandoned cart then send an email understood yes yes pankaj yeah so that is basically saying dynamic you don't know the absolute date but you are trying to get that date in one of the variables and based on that you are making a decision so that is the use case where it can wait until that uh, sorry wait by attribute i have actually open wait until date which is specific date you want to wait till that date nothing different in this wait until date yes wait until duration wait until date wait until attributes so we have covered all of this so what is join join is as the name suggests so like this example i have done this segregation okay now if i use join i can drag it to here that is what is happening see i heard that and right it's go join to the office it's split so you can leave it in this case to be honest agar is journey if you look into this you can see you can exit the journey like this nobody is stopping you but if you use a join it's a better way of doing it okay so you basically make sure all the steps come into one place at the end okay like this 
of course there is nothing to be done but this looks a better journey instead of opening three holes or three different paths got it yes yeah. so that is the use of join you can keep it open as well but then this makes sense if you use it like this and uh, why it's not getting deleted but there would be there won't be any one day date wait but yeah so this is the basically use of join you should use join you shouldn't leave all the path or threads hanging around okay have a nice day bye bye